Good evening, good evening. Let's see if Instagram is going to be working. Give me two seconds here. Let's try again. Live. And there we go. Instagram's having a hard time here, but that's okay. Good evening. Happy Wednesday. Let's just go out of the app. Oh, goodness gracious. Let's try. Live. There we go. Checking connection. Had to restart the app on Instagram. Good evening, everybody. Happy Wellness Wednesday. There we go. We are up and running and ready to go. Hi, friends. Good evening. It is Wellness Wednesday. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. We have an amazing topic to talk about tonight. Um, I love being here with you guys to share and educate you about essential oils, natural alternatives, all things health and wellness, low toxic living, and anything else that I end up you know, throwing in there. Um, good evening, everybody. Pop on. Let me know if you're here. Say hi. If you are new here, welcome. If you've been here for a while, thank you. You can always catch um, the replay. If you are watching the replay, that is awesome. Everyone can catch up on my YouTube educational archive. We are triple broadcasting tonight from Instagram, Facebook, and Zoom. So welcome to all. And um, you can go on my uh, YouTube educational archive to catch up on all of the other classes that I have been doing this virtual education since 2019, no, 2018. So you have a lot of catching up to do. Um, head on over to YouTube, you can search my name, uh, subscribe to be notified of any new content, uh, classes and all that jazz and all the replays will be there. There's also a link in my link tree that you can go ahead and get to that as well. So let me know if you're here live, say hi, where are you watching from? If you're watching live, if you're catching the replay, let me know. So um, please like, comment, and share this broadcast with anyone that you can possibly share with that would be um, interested in natural alternatives. Um, that is the best way to support me. So I would be greatly appreciated if you shared this um, feed through your social media. It's very nice. Or you can just tag anyone who you think that would be interested in natural alternatives for the topic that we are going to talk about tonight. So it would be much appreciated and I would feel so loved and honored if you would do so. So my name is Lindsay I am Marino. I am an essential oil, um, certified essential oil specialist, global team leader and Aroma Touch certified practitioner for doTERRA International. Tonight is a brand new topic that I've never spoken about. Um, it is all about mamas and babies. So pure essential oils are very effective while um, being with child as they have uh, their natural alternatives to any type of over-the-counter medications or synthetic um, medications or even um, some prescriptions that you may not want to take or can't take to support you through your pregnancy, labor and birth, and as well as postpartum. So I am here tonight to explain what essential oils can help support you through that miracle of life. So what we are going to talk about is um, essential oils to help support um, all areas of that. During pregnancy, what to um, maybe stay away from, what is okay, some of the myth bust busters. Um, we're gonna be talking about some private areas. So if you have some little ones, um, you may want to either take them out of the room or put some headphones on, whatever you would like to do. That would be great, actually. I'm gonna put my headphones on so I can hear better. That was the whole reason why I got these, huh? So we're going to talk about some private areas, which is okay. And um, there are some doubts about um, essential oils out there during pregnancy, but we're going to talk all about that. So if you have essential oils in your life, congratulations. And um, my oily heart is happy. But with pregnancy, there's, there could be some changes that need to be made with your essential oil usage. So let me just connect to my AirPods here. And um, we're going to talk um, all about essential oils that can be used while pregnant, breastfeeding, like all of the things. So essential oils can be a great alternative, as well as a natural compound to synthetic drugs. So it can be 
the default microphone has been changed. Okay, what does that mean? Hopefully that didn't change anything. If anybody can't hear me, just let me know. Um, so, there we go. Um, but this is a personal choice that can be made with your doctor. As always, do what feel is best for you. I assure um, with my knowledge and education of oils that we will speak about uh, tonight should give you a little bit a sense of uh, reassurance on how and why to opt into using essential oils as a natural alternative um, during pregnancy to help support you. So it's not uncommon for the body to be sensitive to essential oils. So you're going to want to use them um, minimally um, and really be aware of the dilution ratio, which we're going to go over tonight too. And um, if, uh, if, you know, you would like to uh, go further into letting your doctor know what kind of products you're using, always um, do what's best for you and feels what's best for you. Let's also remember that must we must look at each individual because everybody's body is different. So one oil someone may love while um, someone else may not, um, but everything, um, it's amazing because every single oil is so versatile. So one oil can help support several different issues. So if you like one oil, you didn't like that, there, there's probably a hundred percent chance that there's gonna be an essential oil out there that you will like um, instead. So let's go over some of the oils that are safe to use while um, pregnant. So some oils that can help support you are cardamom and ginger. And we're gonna talk about um, morning sickness, right? So um, cardamom and ginger fights morning sickness and helps to block the pathways to nausea. And you can take that internally in a veggie capsule um, minimally um, and you know do so with you how you feel about it. It's plant medicine. Um, so obviously consult your doctor. Um, you can always just place it over your tummy with a fractionated coconut oil as well to help uh, fight off that nausea. Frankincense, Roman chamomile, lavender, pettigrain, rose. They, all of these oils are very calming and relaxing. So it's gonna promote um, a calming and relaxation and a good night's sleep with those essential oils. Um, geranium is really good to um, improve your mood because we're going to have hormones going all over the place while you're um, pregnant. Lemon patchouli, sandalwood, and wild orange helps to improve your mood as well. Copaiba is relaxing and is really good for any type of discomfort or and for anxious feelings. So there's several different oils that can do specific things. If you have some of these oils in your arsenal, these will be great oils to use for these specific areas. If you don't, we can always go ahead and custom curate something for you. So let's talk about digestion. We're going to talk about digestion, heartburn, talked about nausea, constipation, oh my, all the things, right? So digestion during pregnancy, cardamom and ginger, we were talking about fights morning sickness and blocks the pathways to nausea. Peppermint can give you like a boost, like a pep, pep in your step. I always say that. Um, and um, a boost in dis um, discouragement by nausea and hormones. Um, there is a myth about um, peppermint after pregnancy, but we're gonna go all over that. So this is just during. Um, Slim and Sassy is a great um, complement to the ginger. It also helps to give good relief um, from nausea as well. Heartburn, all the things, right? Digestive en enzymes are gonna be a great um, way to go uh, to help fight the indigestion. So our uh, digestive enzyme is called terazine, right? And just looking up one thing right here. And it is a digestive enzyme that is a complex proprietary blend of an active whole food enzymes. And <clears throat> it's basically whole food enzymes that help to, the, to digest the proteins, the fats, and the complex carbohydrates, sugars, and fibers in the body, which is really, really awesome. So taking these probably more than what you would normally. So it says three fat serving size is three vegetable capsules. You could do one to three, depending on how it's feeling with the heartburn. Um, a good probiotic too is our PB Assist Plus, which is a probiotic defense and helps support digestive and uh, digestive function and immune function. So you're gonna wanna amp those up while you are basically making another human. Um, wild orange peppermint, 
Ginger and Digestin are also great for heartburn as well. Um, another symptom that you're going to have is one of the most common symptoms of pregnancy is constipation. So we're going to talk about all the things, right? Constipation. So Digestin works really well for that discomfort. Also for stomach pains, any type of um, uh, acidity, reflux, diarrhea, vomiting, anything like that. Digestin is going to be a great one to use um, while pregnant. Uh, you're going to have discomfort, pregnancy discomfort, fluid retention, uh, swelling, cramps, migraines, fatigue, head tension, all of that. So with fluid retention and swelling, um, it usually appears in the middle of the pregnancy. And while the enlargement of the uterus compresses the veins on the lower limbs, it's going to make it difficult for the blood to return. So the legs, the ankles, and the feet, those are the ones that are going to suffer and they're going to swell. You've always seen, you know, at the end, women are like putting their feet up. They're like, oh my God, I'm so uncomfortable. Um, lemon essential oil is going to work great to detoxify the body and keep the fluid going in the body. Ashley's like, yeah. Um, and slim and sassy are going to save you internally. Now, when I say internally, either in water, in a vegetable capsule, or as needed, and how you feel is safe for your body. Again, um, I always just want to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Um, cramping comes with the swelling, right? So some great tips, we have deep blue rub. Ashley says, digest then every day during first trimester. Seriously, it was, um, um, it has been a lifesaver for most of my mamas. So, um, and it's also saved me just regularly for indigestion. So I couldn't, I'm a fur mama, but I have a lot of mamas that I have supported and guided through um, essential oils with being pregnant with their babies, all of that to help support their bodies. And they swear by digestion and I swear by it regularly. Um, so with the swelling is gonna come cramping. So deep blue um, rub is our massage in a bottle. We also have the oil, which I have here. Um, it starts with an oil and then they've made the oil into a rub and you can place this basically anywhere of topically that's cramping or giving you some um, discomfort so you can also use the deep blue oil with an aroma touch which is our um, massage oil and you can place it with a fractionated coconut oil this is just a, a good um, carrier oil that helps to give a good massage, you know, maybe give your, your uh, pregnant wife a foot massage or a back rub if she's starting to feel any type of um, uh, retention, fluid retention or cramping and swelling. Um, it helps to make a great massage to help support that. Um, another one which is really good is that I've learned about, I'm learning about this stuff too because I'm a fur mama again. So I dove deep to make sure that I am giving you guys the best of the best information. We have a, a plant-based bone nutrient essential complex. So it's gonna help support bone density levels in women. And it has all the vitamins and the minerals that you need, includes vitamin C, D, calcium, magnesium, and other minerals. So this is a great one to help um, support your body while growing. Hello, baby. Um, Epsom salt infused baths with those oils that we were just talking about, the deep blue um, and the aroma touch. You can also place balance um, to help with circulation on the bottoms of the feet, fennel with circulation, geranium, lavender, and cypress. You could dip your feet. You could do just a, um, a foot soak bath with Epsom salt, or you can do an actual like full bath. Um, have, they have fantastic and amazing effects to help support the body as well. Um, super head tension, the M word that I think I already said once already, but we're not going to say it again. Um, or feeling dizzy. Those are also things that you're going to um, feel or could feel. Um, past tense and peppermint applied to the temples are really, really great. Instead of going and reaching for those synthetic um, over-the-counter medications that you don't really know that are safe for your body and, and you're kind of afraid to use mostly everything. And no offense, but I feel like even if you're not with child, you should really be um, looking at the things that you put in and on your body as well, because that with um, long-term use, they have, they're going to have harmful effects. So having these essential oils in your arsenal um, to be able to support you while you're growing your little miracle baby, um, you should still continue using them as a natural alternative for other things too, because they can support so many different areas of your life. Let me just go to Facebook. There we go, just to make sure if anybody um, went ahead and commented. So um, 
Peppermint and lavender also work really well uh, for any type of dizziness. Um, the deep blue rub is also going to be great for um, any type of head tension. You could start at the back of the neck, down the shoulders, and um, you could put a smidge of the rub here, but I prefer the oil. Just make sure you obviously don't get to your in, in your eyes because that's not fun. Um, I'm just looking at all these symptoms and I'm like, oh my gosh, do I ever want to do this? Like, I'm kind of scared. But when I was going through and, and, and preparing this for you guys, um, at the end, we were talking about, uh, I'm going to talk about, um, you know, loving your body and what it's doing and, and, and um, honoring it, that it created this being, right? So fatigue. So with all the hormones, you're going to feel naturally tired. Um, you're building a person, right? So citrus bliss is going to combat low energy and it it's very invigorating and uplifting. It has all those citruses in one. Peppermint is really invigorating. I know I'm probably reiterating myself, but as I was saying before, the essential, one essential oil is so versatile, it can do several different things. Um, uh, elevation is very, it's, it's the joyful blend. So it's like happiness in a bottle and I have it right here and it smells so good. I'm just gonna do a little bit just because she's here and I love it. So good evening, everybody. So tonight we have a live giveaway. If you stay until the end, um, you'll be entered into the giveaway into my personal essential oil stash basket. Um, tonight we're gonna be talking about essential oils and pregnancy. I just saw that a couple of people um, jumped, jumped on and I just wanted to let them know. They're probably like, what is this crazy lady talking about tonight? So elevation is literally as happiness in a bottle. It's so energizing, it's refreshing. I love to diffuse it. You can literally inhale it just like I was, place it on the back of your neck and motivate. Motivate is like a citrusy peppermint that is very uplifting as well. So there's several different oils. Um, you can pick what oil resonates with you and what, what um, scent you like better. Uh, and then we go from there. So you don't have to have all the things. This is just gives you a variety of options of what oils um, are really good for uh, use for pregnancies for these symptoms. So managing stress and sleep, you're going to get uncomfortable, you're going to have some fears, you're going to have anxious feelings, bad night sleep, tossing, turning, feeling uncomfortable, you know, later when you get a little bigger, or even during the whole thing, you're, you're going to feel, you know, this little, this little person kicking in there. So it's kind of like, Whoa, what was that? Like, um, so all of these things can be a part of many uh, of women's pre pregnancies. So we may uh, we have so many oils that help support us in these areas, and they work amazing for mamas that I guide and support. So for fear and anxious feelings, there there's oils that can help stabilize these emotions. And you're going to be emotional. It's an emotional time. My go-to for emotions regularly, even for myself. We frankincense and copaiba, we call this hashtag Frank and Co. <laughs> um, and you can take these under the tongue. You can do a, a roof uh, press, uh, th roof thumb press, which you just take this and you just uh, rub the top of your mouth. And the top of your mouth is the closest part to your brain. Your brain sits like right up, right up, right above it. Okay. And our brains are 85% water. Fun fact of the day. Um, and when you do that, you're just giving the, the oxygen and the, the calming and everything is going to go right there. When you're inhaling the essential oils, which is awesome, we know that it's going to go right through the olfactory and the uh, sensors in the nose and go right to the limbic system in the brain, which is part of the emotional support and decision making that we like to do. So that's going to help facilitate invigorating emotions, calming emotions and relaxation, um, relaxing all of the emotions that you're having. So um, these oils paired together are just like, boom, boom. It's like a one, two, just for any type of anxious feelings in general too. But you can use them, a thumb press, as many times a day as, as you would like. Um, it's gonna promote also cellular health, health and inflammation, supporting the nervous system, which is your entire body. And I always say that every time I talk about Copaiba, the entire body um, is your nervous system. So um, another oil is peace. And that's our reassuring blend. So it's going to help bring feelings of reassurance and peace with um, over attachment, fear, or worry about, you know, what's going on? What am I going to do? Do I know how to, um, you know, take care of this little human? Like, how am I going to do this? Um, but, you know, your mama instincts will, will kick in. And I don't even have children, but my friends that do, it's just kind of like, give me that baby. <laughs> give me that baby.
baby, you know, I was a nanny when I was in high school and my brother's nine years younger than me. So I have plenty of experience. Um, I don't mind changing up the diapers or the feeding or the holding, you know, give me that little mushy gushy chunky monkey. Um, but um, in tune is another one that is all things calms and uh, calm and focus. So it's going to help to bring balance to your mood, elevation again, citrus bliss on guard, all in the diffuser is going to help boost your mood as well. Um, let's move on to sleep. So get a diffuser, okay? Put it by your bed, um, even regularly if you have issues with sleeping, but sleep is gonna be, I guess like, even after you have a kid, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, you're gonna have problems with sleeping too until you get a regular schedule, which is gonna take weeks and even months. Um, but get a diffuser and once this baby comes out, if you have any of these oils, you can use these oils on the, the little one too. And we're gonna go over that as well. Um, in a diffuser, you can mix Serenity, Breathe, Ongar, Copaiba for respiratory, immune, and, and nervous system support. And then we also have a Serenity soft gel, which you can take internally. Um, I have it right here. I don't have the bottle because it's in my recycling. I keep the bottle, so always keep your empties. My recycling, meaning my recycling my bottles that don't go anywhere when I, when I sample and keep all my bottles. But this is our um, Serenity soft gel. So the Serenity essential oil, is a non-internal oil, right? I'm gonna keep this one out because I take it for my sleep. I'll take that one later. Um, the Serenity um, essential oil is not an internal oil. It's not um, to be used internally. So they've created an essential, um, a soft gel out of the Serenity ingredients that I say for internal use. So you can pop one of those. It's a great alternative to any type of melatonin or prescription or over the counter crap that you really don't wanna put in your body while you're creating a human and building things. Um, so the next topic I wanna talk about is breast and uh, skincare. Um, so breast and skincare, your body's gonna change. And by using oils to support those feelings and embracing your body and creating life, it's gonna be challenging, um, but when you have essential oils, it will be 10 times better. So um, when you're feeling itchy, you know, things are gonna get bigger and um, itch and your belly and even the breasts and around the areolas, um, your, uh, some stretch marks may show up and you're just gonna like, gonna be like, what is going on with my body, right? So we're gonna take baths with moisturized lotions in it, Epsom salt bath infused with um, skin supportive essential oils. My go-to, my skin go-to is frankincense, lavender, and tea tree. There are a crap ton more of essential oils that are great for skin, but that's just my go-to. That's what I like. I cut myself here and I put a little bit of lavender and frankincense. I'm gonna put a little bit of frankincense on it right now. Um, but all things skin, and you can infuse your essential oils, uh, I mean, infuse your Epsom salts with your essential oils and place that in there and put a little carrier in there in your bath. Um, grapeseed oil, jojoba oil, vitamin C, anything that you would like, those are my go-tos as well. Um, and then you can make your own bath scrub or doTERRA has a bath scrub with either sugar-based or salt-based with those essential oils and coconut oil, not a fractionated coconut oil. I don't know what my computer is doing. It's charging and then not charging. Oh, it's kind of unplugged. Sorry, guys. Hold on. I think I hit it with my foot and it was like half unplugged. Half. I was like, why is it sounding like it's recharging again? So um, what was I saying? So you don't want to put a, um, a fractionated coconut oil in a scrub that you're making because you don't want it to be too oily because this does not solidify. This is fractionated coconut oil. It goes through a process where it takes out the lipids and the fatty acids and the smell of coconut and it always stays in liquid form, but um, you want regular coconut oil. You want that, that good stuff, right? Um, you, want, you want the smell of it, you want the fatty acids, you want all of that. Um, so you can make an easy salt scrub with hydrating coconut oil and great essential oils um, for essential oils for skin um, and scrub your body down, get in, the, get in the essential oil infused bathtub and then always use a moisturizer or a cream with those same oils. Um, or you can use yarrow palm, rose, geranium. Uh, what else is good for skin? I mean, there's so many, I can't even think of it. Uh, my favorite is just frankincense, lavender, and tea tree. That's literally my go-to. Yarrow palm I use every day. I, I just put some on beforehand just to give a little glow. Um, because I used to put my makeup on before I did these and I'm like, it's eight o'clock by the time I'm done and then I have to wash my makeup off and I'm not even going anywhere. So I'm like, this is just fresh, fresh 
fresh face. I don't even have a filter on because normally I do that. I'm like, my skin is looking pretty good these days. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to embrace it. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to embrace the body that you have created a, a person and you want to embrace it. So treat it good. You know, give yourself some self care, do some body scrubs. If you don't want to do it yourself, make it and then take it to someone who'll do it for you. You know, um, get your husband to scrub your feet. Um, uh, moisturize the belly so you can make um, a lotion based moisturizer you can make a shea butter based moisturizer and in infuse it with the oils and just kind of whip it up in a bowl a little bit um, you can also make an, a serum oil based moisturizer with the same oils that are my go-to jojoba grape seed vitamin uh, vitamin c um, rose hip oil is great argan oil is great those are all great bases and then you add the essential oils that are great for skin um, so you want to um, use that on the tummy and you can make a spray for itching as well with the same oils again with maybe some witch hazel. You can also put in a spray bottle a couple of pumps of fractionated coconut oil because it's more liquidy. Obviously, you don't want to put regular coconut oil in a spray, but you can put that in there so it's hydrating too. So that's just some ways to be able to um, support your skin while it's changing during these nine months. Um, you're going to have some breast sensitivity and tenderness in the first um, symptoms of, of pregnancy. Grapefruit is great uh, for um, breast and uterine problems. Lavender is natural and relaxing. It's like a natural um, pain reliever, very calming to the mind, body, and soul. Clary Calm is great for hormonal balance, which and it also increases um, milk, and it protects the areola from the milk clogging um, in post childbirth. So there's going to be a specific time where you want to use any type of clary calm and clary sage. It's going to be like in the beginning and after you give your child. So we're going to go over um, what clary sage and clary calm can do. Hi, Andy. Um, can do for um, your birthing. There's a specific. You don't. You want to stay away from it at a specific time. Um, so. Elangy Lang is great for finding hormonal imbalances and emotions as well. So let's talk about the actual day, right? So that's like everything that you could use beforehand and, and during. So the day is coming. You have your essential oils in your hospital bag, right? Right. You got your hospital bag checklist. You want to prepare that beforehand. You always want to stick a diffuser in there. You could bring a diffuser to the hospital. I know you can. I brought few diffusers to my pregnant mom. And was like, she's like, I forgot my diffuser. I'm like, I'm on the way. <laughs> so you get your diffuser, bring some fractionated coconut oil because people are going to be massaging you and you're going to request that. You're going to demand that while you're um, feeling, you know, all of the, the pain. And you're going to want to calm and relax. You don't want to be nervous and, 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 and stressed and anything like that. Your hygiene products, bring your all your favorite hygiene products. Uh, doTERRA has a lot, but if you like your hygiene products, you can do that. Um, pad sickles. We're going to talk about how to make a pad sickle. Okay. Pad sickle is just a frozen pad with calming essential oils on them, which is really cool. I'm going to go over a recipe shortly and uh, I'll be posting it as well. So you want to bring your pad sickles, the oils that you want for, um, for, for you as a mama. We're going to go over those um, oils for the baby. We're going to go over those. Any type of supplements. Your, your um, digestive enzymes, your probiotic, your bone nutrient, anything that you want to bring. Because if you're in there, um, whether you're having um, a vaginal uh, pregnant uh, labor or you're having a cesarean, doesn't know how many days you're going to be in there, be prepared with your with your supplements and always bring your lifelong vitality. Lifelong vitality is uh, is and can be a pro um, a prenatal vitamin. It has everything in them that you could possibly imagine that you need and is safe for pregnancy to take uh, while being pregnant, which is awesome. Obviously your supplements, um, peri spray, we're gonna talk about how to make a uh, peri spray very quickly and then clothes for you and the baby. So um, must, have, must haves for delivery, postpartum and for the baby. Um, oils to stimulate contractions, which is why we were gonna talk about Clary Sage and Clary Calm um, for pain fear, anxious feelings, and to harmonize and just make a serene environment while bringing uh, life into the world. So some studies that show that uh, oils can be useful during labor um, for lower back pain, lavender, any type of citrus, jasmine, um, clary sage, because we're going into labor, you want to help to get those contractions going. We're going to talk about that too. Wild orange, 
pink pepper and geranium um, to reduce stress and anxious feelings. You could use geranium again, rose, wild orange, and lavender. So you hear the oils over and over again, but it, it is honestly um, so great to be able to, I need, oh my God, I need hair, hairspray or peri spray. I use deep blue before and after, I know. Um, so um, anxious feelings, rose, geranium, or uh, orange and lavender. And you'll hear me say them over and over again because they're so versatile, you can do more than one thing, reduced delivery time. So reduced delivery time, okay? What, is, what does that sound like to you? Let's not push for God only knows how long we need to. So we're gonna use clary sage at this stage and um, it's going to increase and stimulate contractions, okay? And relieve pain caused by them. What? What? Like, I'm so glad that, I, you know, when that day comes, I will be prepared. Yeah, Lauren says before and after labor, use deep blue before and after. Uh, honestly, I'm so glad that you did. Um, so contractions and discomfort, Clary Sage is gonna help the contractions come. It's gonna help a reduced delivery time and it's going to help to relieve the pain caused by them. I'm gonna be stacked up on some Clary Sage at that stage. Lavender and Clary Sage together is, is great um, to stimulate contractions and calm. Um, not to use during pregnancy, Clary Sage. During the pregnancy, you do not want to use it like I mean, you can use it in the beginning very, very minimally, but like when you get to a, a certain point, and obviously this is going to be what is comfortable for you, you want to not bring on contractions, obviously. So it should be avoided mostly during pregnancy. By the time of delivery, it can release um, oxytocin into the brain, which helps it's to stimulate contractions. So that's gonna bring you discomfort, right? So Ylang Ylang is a feminine floral scent to reduce stress, muscle tension, and pain. And that's just everything that you're going to need at that moment. Basil and black pepper eases discomfort of contractions. And how you're going to use these oils, um, also um, cinnamon relieves discomfort and improves uterine action. So how you're going to use these oils is you're just going to bring your fractionated coconut oil and you're going to be like, you're going to have them all lined up and you're going to be like, well, whichever you, you resonate with, you don't have to have all the oils, obviously. Um, whichever oils you resonate with and you just be like, pump, drop, rub. <laughs> so this, it's gonna, the oils are best to massage. Um, so pair it with a fractionated coconut oil on the spine, back of the feet, um, and all just all the places. Lube, lube it up, right? So baby's here, okay? You're home. You probably have some parts that um, are uncomfortable. So we're going to talk all about pad sickles, okay? Um, postpartum, we're going to talk about exhaustion. You're going to be exhausted. Um, spray for a uh, peri spray, pain, um, stimulating uh, colostrum production, mood and harmonizing the environment. We're gonna talk about all the things you need to do to support yourself when you bring that beautiful baby home. So Citrus Bliss is very invigorating. It's a refreshing blend and it's a natural um, antibacterial. Lavender is a wonderful relaxant for you and your baby. It's just, it's, I always say it's my gateway oil. It's all things calming mind, body and soul. And I actually want to remind myself to take lavender internally tonight because I forgot um, to do so. Uh, I, for, I keep forgetting to do so because I always take my, my, so, my soft gel, but I just kind of want a lot more lavender in my life, you know? So lavender is just a great relaxant. Geranium supports connection between parents and baby. And I wanted to get my book out here for emotionally for this one, I wrote, wrote a note to get my book out. Geranium is the oil of love and trust. So it's going to help restore um, the connection between the parents and the baby. Roman chamomile helps to restore energy and gives you like a reassurance of the environment. Um, so just choose one that you identify with most. That's just what I keep saying. Um, clary sage oil will support the, the breast to stimulate um, milk production for the babies too. So obviously that's a really good oil for afterwards. Um, postpartum contractions, that's gonna happen. You're gonna, you're gonna feel a little uncomfortable for a little while. Um, you're gonna still be in a little bit of pain during pregnancy. The uterus grows 25 times its original size. I was just like, uh, really? Um, Clary Calm is going to help with the hormonal support, support and can be applied over the lower abdomen 
um, lower abdomen area. So Clary Calm, I mean Clary Calm or Clary Sage. Clary Calm is one of the the uh, blends that we have. Clary Sage is an oil that we have separately, but it's also in the Clary Calm. Both of them are amazing. I would just say um, Clary Sage can be taken internally on its own. Clary Calm is only used um, to be used topically. So if you want both, you grab both. If not, then just get one. But it's this, that's basically one of the, the, the blends that you're going to want on hand. Deep blue rub, definitely going to want that on hand too because you're going to be uncomfortable in all the ways. Um, this will definitely help with discomfort. You just apply it topically everywhere. Geranium um, is a great ally to um, with Clary Calm and the deep blue rub as well. So let's talk about some parts that are going to be uncomfortable. Um, and we're going to talk about the pad sickle. So your body went through an intense work. You know, you had childbirth, it's gonna need some TLC in some areas. And it's important to take care of any laceration, lacerations, any type of heat, any type of um, tears. So we're gonna talk about the pad sickle, which is a frozen pad worked both as an ice pack and a soothing pad. So they're for discomfort, vaginal bruising, inflammation and swelling. So it's great to have the Immortel blend, which is our anti-aging blend, but it has all of the oils that are um, great for calming the skin. So it has frankincense, Hawaiian sandalwood, lavender, myrrh, helichrysum, and rose. It is a divine oil. And I want to talk about the background of it. Immortal H I J K M N P. There it is. It is the oil of spiritual insight. So if you're feeling um, spiritually disconnected, you know, dark, very dark and, and uh, discouraged, using the oil is going to help you feel spiritual, have a spiritual transformation, have faith and feel hopeful. So it's going to help support emotionally as well. But we're going to stick this in a pad. So you're just going to get a big old pad that's going to support that whole entire area. And you're going to freeze it after you make the padsicle. So basically, you're going to put a few drops of Immortel in some witch hazel and um, add aloe vera to it and spray the pads with the solution. I'll give you the full recipe uh, on, when I post it. So you can spray the pads with the full solution. Then you close the pad back up and you freeze it. And then you use it uh, to relieve the parts that are going to be a little bit on fire. And um, you can use just witch hazel and, and aloe, but these essential oils are literally going to radiate um, up there and literally calm all of those areas. You can also make a peri spray with the same with uh, Immortel um, and some water. Um, lavender, uh, you can also use lavender, copaiba, helichrysum, rosemary, um, and geranium. Uh, and you can also use that peri spray to spray right on the pad as well, if you'd like. And the solution can also use, be used in an ointment um, to, during delivery to prevent the lacerations, 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 I couldn't say that for a second, lacerations and tears as well. So for the baby, you really only need two that I feel that the baby really needs, um, frankincense and lavender. You're going to put a little bit of frankincense and lavender on the bottoms of their feet diluted, um, make a little roller bottle and just up, up and down the spine, bottoms of the feet. Um, just to support their little bodies. That's really all they need at that time, all things cellular and all things calming. Um, when they get a little older, there's obviously other oils you can help for digestion, colic, all that stuff. Um, but that's another um, whole entire class. So um, not every woman is going to be able to give birth vaginally. So I wanna talk about um, cesarean and how to care for a c-section scar if for some reason you have to have a c-section c-section i want to share some tips with you for uh, recovery so you're going to want to wear comfortable panties obviously afterwards drink plenty of water um don't like carry you know weight and stuff like that consume a lot of probiotics um and um digestive enzymes to eliminate the toxins that you've you've dealt with. And we're gonna talk about um, detox as well. Um, so use twice as much of the uh, probiotic and the digestive enzymes to eliminate all of that. Helichrysum is a unique oil that um, um, helps to 
support the cesarean section and support the tissue and the trauma and stop minor bleeding. I had a brain fart for a second. I was like, what am I talking about? Um, so you can use for two to three weeks, a few drops straight through the incision. Um, it helps to speed up the process a lot. It's very calming, very easy. You don't have to dilute it. It's very good for the skin. You can use it neat. Um, lavender is an anti-inflammatory um, and is a natural, um, what is it called? Not anti. Well, yeah, it is natural anti-inflammatory, but it's a natural. I can't think of it. It goes with lemon, lavender, and peppermint, the trifecta for any type of seasonal threats, natural antihistamine. So it's gonna just be like it's gonna calm any type of um, in inflammation with reducing the scar and relieving itching when there's like little spots that start to dissolve. So uh, a pe peppermint, a drop in the toilet is gonna help to stimulate the bladder after um, childbirth as well. And digest then, you can apply on the navel to help support with constipation as well. Um, there's just gonna be all the things and we're gonna talk about all the stuff. It's gonna be like, people will probably jump on and be like, whoa, what'd she talk about? Um, you can use Immortel to help. That's an excellent uh, essential oil for scarring. Um, it can be applied directly on the spot to support the skin. Um, Copaiba and frankincense, you can use that uh, daily for inflammation. So like when you're um, digesting, when we talk about the, the scarring um, to help with constipation, you don't want to push too hard because that's gonna be in, um, hard too and you wanna be very careful about that incision. I just wanted to clarify that for some reason, because I was just kind of like, is that wrong? <laughs> um, Zendocrine. So we have a great oil called Zendocrine, which is our detoxification oil, and it is safe for internal use. Um, and um, we're going to talk about oils that are going to be safe for internal use when you, you are breastfeeding and stuff like that in a moment. Um, but make a roller with 10 drops of frankincense and then top that off with fractionated coconut oil. And you can apply it to the soles of your feet um, every couple of hours to eliminate all the medications that you've made that may have been given. If you're not doing it natural, I mean, God bless you if you do, but if you have a cesarean, you're gonna get you know a lot of medication. And even when you um, do give a vaginal birth, if it's not natural, you're gonna be given medication. Second 64 ounces down today. Very proud of myself. So um, that's going to help to eliminate the, the meds and stuff and help you detoxify. So the cesarean scar is going to be an important incision to help support um, and has risk of adhesion formation, which is when the scar extends from within the tissue across to another. So it's usually um, across a virtual space, such as like a um, you know, the, the lower belly, obviously, but adhesion formation is post-surgery typically occurs when uh, two injured surfaces are close to one another. So we want to prevent that. And um, you can do so by just like gently massaging the scar after the wound is completely closed and the crust is gone. So you can do this for several months after giving birth and it's often to help um, the scar as well and bring back the sensation that may have been numb in that area. So you can use Immortel lavender helichrysum and place about a couple of drops in some fractionated coconut oil and just massage that area gently. Um, you're gonna feel constipated soon after delivering a uh, cesarean. It's normal to feel how difficult it may be to eliminate comfortably. So like I was saying, when you're pushing too hard, you can use digest then obviously you don't want to hurt that area, but you may be constipated as well. So not only being constipated, but not only wanting to hurt the area, it's like, oh my gosh, it's all the things, right? So you can apply digest then to the navel area. Works like magic. So when my stomach is hurting and um, I don't have a glass jar or something to drink the oil, I'll put it right underneath of my tongue. But if you don't want to do that, you can put it right on the navel area and drink a lot of water. Um, and you can also use the natural calm that I always talk about which is a magnesium citrate that's an internal uh, powder that you can take two, two, I always say two tablespoons, two teaspoons in a drink, and you can use that and that will help to loosen things up as well. Because um, I've done that accidentally, like it says two teaspoons just to help relieve stress and, and it's the anti-stress drink and magnesium supports all the cells, it's just really calming. But if you do too much, um, it will go right through you because I've done that. <laughs> so let's go into breastfeeding and oils. So uh, many women ask if they can use oils while breastfeeding. There's another myth. 
Yes, you can, but um, it's gotta be doTERRA's oils. I wanted to say pure essential oils, but they all say pure essential oils on the label. And when someone doesn't have the knowledge that, um, that I have, or if you don't have the knowledge at all and you're not aware, that's why I do this, um, you're not gonna know. So you're only gonna wanna trust a pure therapeutic grade essential oil um, that are of the highest quality. And 95 to 98% of the essential oils in the market are not pure and they're adulterated. And it's really sad and the quality is crap. So doTERRA is one of the only companies that invests in advanced testing. And that's why we have our quality standard is CT, uh, CPTG, which is Certified Pure Therapeutic Grade. And um, you also want to follow the dilution ratio, like I was saying before, and listen to your body and listen to your baby's body and use the 1% in a 10 ml roller. So if you're making a roller, use 1%. Go very slow um, for newborns, and then you can use 1% to 3% for toddlers and up from there. So 1% is just one drop of an essential oil in a 10 ml. Um, 3% obviously is three drops. And you can go up from there depending on what you're blending and what you're mixing. Um, so just start small. A little goes a long way. Um, oils are excellent for breastfeeding, but some can, um, some should be avoided. Um, strong, hot, spicy, herbaceous oils should not be used. Like peppermint can reduce milk supply. Um, it's not a myth. It has happened. Um, but everybody's body is different. I know that of someone that it didn't happen to. So it just really depends. Oregano, cassia, climb. Uh, climb. I just saw clove and thyme at the same time. Cassia, oregano, clove, and thyme. They have a very intense aroma and they should only be used really if necessary. And if you do, dilute it with coconut oil, apply it to the soles of your feet, wear some, so wear some socks to minimize the smell because it can bother not only you, um, but the baby as well. If you know the baby's going to be attached to that hip. Um, use softer oils like calming oils, frankincense, lavender, geranium, ylang-ylang, clary sage, the calming oils, um, and then strongest really, really if necessary in a veggie cap or on your feet when no one can smell them because it's gonna, it's, it's a lot. Wintergreen should be avoided unless it's mixed in with the deep blue that you're using topically, um, but in small quantities, not close to anyone, you know, the baby's face. Um, oils that detoxify you. It is believed that toxins can get can come out of the milk. So be aware of the high amounts of internal use when breast, breastfeeding. Again, do what makes you feel comfortable, especially with newborns, but you can do it. It's plant medicine. Um, the aroma of certain essential oils can come out of the milk and not be pleasant for the baby and can even eat, interfere with breastfeeding. And of course, um, if you have doubts about oils during breastfeeding, um, you can consult your physician and a specialized, I uh, could consult a breastfeeding consultant. They have um, professional breastfeeding consultants if you really feel like you need a little bit more education about it as well. So um, for some women, it can be really uncomfortable to start um, breastfeeding. You, uh, the nipples can become cracked, painful and dry and may end up giving up because it just gets, um, you get frustrated. So you can also speak to your consultant about that. And of course, be prepared with essential oils because we have all things skin, frankincense, lavender, geranium, Roman chamomile, neroli. You can mix any of these essential oils with a coconut oil, uh, fractionated coconut oil or any other carrier oil um, or a, a solid coconut oil, mix that in and make a little um, paste. Um, and you can apply right to the nipples right after breastfeeding. So. It's going to help repair and um, repair the breast and help with discomfort. Before the baby breastfeeds, you want to clean your breasts off just to make sure it, you know, there's no, um, not that it's bad. You just don't want them to taste something and be like, eh, and then not want to keep breastfeeding with you. Um, myrrh, sandalwood, wild orange, copaiba definitely can help as well. Um, you don't want the baby to have direct contact with the oil that's on here. So make sure to clean that area before. If you do experience some reduction in milk, um, you may just be getting ready to breastfeed soon and you want to make sure that you have enough milk for your baby. You can use some oils that help to stimulate the production of breast milk. So if you feel like peppermint may be doing that, you can change it up. 
Phenyl increases milk secretion and blood levels in prolactin in the blood. So that's a hormone that signals the body to produce breast milk. So that can also um, prevent duct clogging as well. So some sources uh, suggest not using it for more than 10 days because of the anthol component. It's um, excreted in the milk and even in the um, herbal teas. So try for like 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, 10 days, and then um, it should increase the milk production. And then you can uh, use topically instead of internally. But we go through those things as they happen, you know, and I'm here to support you through it. I just don't want you to be like, here, use this oil and you're on your own. I'm still here for you. Um, so I will guide you through all of that and be there for you and be your oil uh, labor and delivery oil fairy. <laughs> um, clary sage also will help promote mil uh, milk production and can help balance your hormones and improve your mood. So there's three things right there that clary sage can act actually do. I mean, it does more, but I know I keep talking about it, but it's a really great oil. Lavender again, milk production, um, sense very uh, helps with sensitive uh, nipples, clogged nipples and milk ducts. Basil helps to minimize stress levels and it can also um, have a major cause of uh, is a stress levels. So it helps with stress levels, which stress is a major cause of reduced milk. I was going to say, about to say basil is, but no. <laughs> um, other essential oils for milk production, there's tons of them, cardamom, copai, but um, geranium and jasmine. So you can apply one to two of these oils topically, uh, one, you know, a couple times a day, um, and you should have a good amount of milk. Avoid peppermint oil um, and the mixtures that it's in because they, um, I wanted to make sure I said mixtures because there are blends that have peppermint in it. So always read if you have like balance is a blend. Uh, elevation is a blend. Motivate is a blend. Single oils are deep blue is a blend. Single oils are frankincense, copaiba, all that stuff. So you want to avoid the use of peppermint in the blends as well. Meaning internally, like deep blue topically for your back, you're, you're going to be fine. Um, so after giving, giving birth, a woman's body goes through uh, another like hormonal revolution, right? Um, did you know that the placenta is a potent hormone producer? And when it's removed, there is an abrupt drop in um, estrogen and progesterone that will only return to normal uh, with babies, the baby's weaning. So at the same time, um, prolactin production goes up a lot. So the wave of sadness can occur. We're going to call that, the, um, we're going to say PBD for short, but we're going to call it PBD baby blues. Um, so frankincense, copaiba, these are my top three for any type of blues, but especially for baby blues, because that's what we're talking about. Um, frankincense, copaiba, and balance. And I have them here next to me because this is where I come every morning and I apply my oils uh, to prepare myself for the day. Frankincense, copaiba, under the tongue, balance on the bottoms of the feet every single morning. So all things grounding, all things balancing, supporting the nervous system, helps anxious feelings and emotions. Um, it's important to seek help if emotions don't subside and can lead, lead to deeper emotions after birth. So about three quarters of all new mothers experience the, this baby blues, um, four to five days after delivery or even earlier. And um, if the delivery was more traumatic, it can be like right at the, the day after. Um, usually should disappear about 14, 15 days after the baby is born. But if it doesn't go away, it definitely could be the, the baby blues. So um, it, that can occur within up to four weeks, from four weeks to 30 weeks after delivery. And some symptoms that you can, you know, see if something's going on, insomnia, um, emotions, not being able to stabilize your emotions, sad feelings, fatigue, anxious feelings, low concentration, being tired, sad, bad mood, low sexual desire, um, disinterest in social life, and loss of appetite. So if you're having a couple of those um, symptoms, it could be the baby blues, but um, knowledge is power, right? And if you know better, you do better. So with the correct information, you could totally take care of yourself. Ask for help if you need. Um, that's the intention of this class. I don't wanna take it lightly because um, not being able to stabilize and maintain your emotions is near and dear to my heart regularly um, without even giving birth. So I want to make sure that um, this, there are plenty of natural alternatives 
to support you emotionally. And that's why I am here to share with you guys. So there are trials that have been shown that essential oils can help elevate the mood. So when you inhale, like we, like I've talked about 5,000 times in the olfactory, into the brain, um, there are scents that are transported, transported directly to the brain when you inhale oils, um, which makes the oils work as emotional triggers. That's why they can support sad feelings, anxious feelings, and maintain your emotions. So we spoke about some oils that maintain emotions, but let's go over some like main essential oils that can help support emotions. Bergamot, it, bergamot, bergamot is very stimulating. It's gonna be, bring feelings of joy, freshness, and energy. Lavender um, is very beneficial to a uh, calming mood. It's gonna help fight the sadness. And Roma chamomile is another great um, medicinal herb that helps combat stress, promotes relaxation. It's very, very calming. Ylang Ylang has immediate positive effects on, on your mood by helping release negative emotions, such as anger, low self-esteem, and even jealousy. Baby's gonna come into the picture. Uh, daddy might get jealous or mama might get jealous. You never know what's gonna happen. So take care of yourself, use oils, seek help if you notice symptoms, Please reach out to me if you need anything, um, have any questions, um, need any type of help with supporting you with natural alternatives um, during pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. I am here for you with any type of questions that you may have. Um, so now we have a little bit more knowledge of what oils uh, to use during st the state, all of the stages, and what oils to avoid. Um, did a little myth, bust myth busting, and um, just listen to your body and consult your physician who uh, respects your choices to use essential oils and more natural alternatives. So if you would love to bring these oils into your home, please leave me a comment below or reach out to me on any of the social vortexes. Um, you can message me anywhere. I would love to guide and support you through the miracle of life and um, your family in general. And we can hop on a Zoom call to chat about your specific needs and custom curate uh, oil specifically for you in any stage that you are in right now. Um, when getting started with me and this amazing plant medicine, you will receive an awesome welcome bundle. If you'd like to know what's in the welcome bundle, um, hit me up and we will chat about it. You'll be plugged into our continued education oily community, our good vibe tribe, and you get me to guide you and support you because um, you will never know, never not know what to do with your essential oils with me. So. Um, if there is anybody here left live, we will go ahead and get ready for our next giveaway. So don't forget that I'll be back live Friday this afternoon, uh, this Friday afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to share ways to support um, pain and inflammation naturally with essential oils. Um, inflammation is the root cause of dis-ease. Remember that for Friday, okay? Um, support your inflammation, you support your pain and dis-ease. So, giveaway time. I see two people on Facebook. I don't see anybody on Instagram. It's a quiet night tonight, but that's okay. That's okay. If anything, we will do another giveaway next week. It's no big deal. Give a couple of moments. Thanks for the share, Anne Marie. I see that you're here. I think I still need to send out the last week's um, giveaway. I didn't do that because then I went on vacation. All right, so we're just going to skip the um, giveaway for this week. No big deal. Um, I will see you Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope you guys have a great rest of your uh, Wednesday evening, and I'll see you Friday. Love you.